Uh, what I understand is they caught two surgeons, so they do have surgeons, and they have a uh, fairly large one on that. All right, here come your surgeons, guys. They're going to process one of the surgeons here. See, go over and look at the surgeon, guys. Go out, look at the window. I'm sorry. I don't know how long we're going to well, do First, they'll weigh it. So. Go out, look out the window, guys. They'll weigh it, and then, uh, then they'll put it on the board and measure it. You go. You go. We're good. We're tied up to them, too. We're not going anywhere. They do have a couple surgeons out there if you want to take a look. Maybe rotate people in and out a little now, bit. You notice on the, on the fin towards the on the top of the fish or the back. There we see go. That it's got Look a tag it. on see? it. Oh, very good. So I, I think they probably tag it. Measuring out? But right now they're going to measure it. They tag that one. They're going to measure them. They measure the girth. How big around the fish is. And that's a good indicator of uh, how, how fast that fish is growing. And then they also do a, a commercial link. Because there was a commercial fishery for many years, uh, there's a lot of data that was just measured up as commercial link. Uh, if you look at the uh, underside side of the, uh, if you look at the underside, that fish got an extra fin. Uh, back towards the vents, there's a set of paired fins on fish. You see that? That's an extra fin growing there. That's an anomaly. You've seen one other fish like that. You also see uh, that there's some red marks or um, openings, or areas on the skin where there's something attached. Okay, that was a lamprey attached. Lampreys are parasitic fish, uh, which we have an example of one here. That came off one of the surgeons. Um, and they rasp a hole through the side of the fish and they uh, eat the body fat. That's how they get their A sea lamprey is a, a much larger example of that, which we don't find in Lake St. Clair. Sea lampreys are deep water organisms. All of the lampreys that we see are native lampreys. They're called silver lampreys. Um, that, that fish is already tagged, right? Okay, they, they put on the external tag, but uh, everyone that's, in, that's working with Sturgeon on the Great Lakes is now also inserting a pit tag uh, into the fish and put it in behind the head. So point, Roy, point to where the pit tag goes. Yeah, so they insert it with a hypodermic syringe like that. And this is an example of a tag. Uh, some of you have uh, marked your pets with a readable tag. That's what that is. So this is readable, and he's got the, he can read the tag right here. So you know, and there'll be the number will show up right there, the individual number that's assigned to this particular tag. Can you guys figure out what it is? Um, we started working on uh, Lake Sturgeon about 2002 or 2003, and so far we have tagged uh, about 2,500 2, Lake Sturgeon. And we're at the point now where we're getting a fair number of tag returns from the fishermen. So I think already this year we've gotten you know, like 15 tags back. This is 14 too as well, Ken. There's some other. 51 even. Bob, how old would a fish have size? That size is probably 18, 20 years old. So the really big ones are really old. Did, did they show you the mouth? You sure and show the mouth this time. <laughs> Uh, there are uh, a number of different groups that are working on sturgeon in the Great Lakes. Most of the work is, is in uh, monitoring reproduction and trying to restore spawning habitat. Actually, we're going to be uh, 
where again some of the money from the Obama administration is going to be used to create spawning habitat in the middle channel of the St. Croix River. The, um, the, na the quote, natural spawning ground that we know of off Algonac in the North Channel was one of the places where the cinders were dumped. And so that's a very good spawning population. We do a lot of survey work around that particular site in May when the fish are in there spawning. We use a different kind of gear. We use set lines for that. They're up. They're up. Just reach right in there and grab it. They're, they're, uh, they're very, very slippery. Yeah, that's one of them. Oh, there we go. Sue. Oh, Sue. It won't. Uh, we can let him attack you again. It won't. I know. I just, <laughs> very slippery. Lots of times the kids yeah. would just love to play. Uh, uh, you want to handle it? No? Yeah. It's a serious. Right. So, it, it won't attack you. I don't know. I try again. I, I held everything. It, it won't try and eat through your skin. I held snakes. I held snakes. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, Huh? Yeah. All right, you're going to make me try again, huh? Are you guys ready? From right. experience of holding on to it. He's going to catch it when he jumps out again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what it's doing? And it's coming out through here and jumping out. We find out. as many as yeah, 40 really scars on a sturgeon from the silver neck. Oh! And, uh, he's stuck in the bottom of the boat. No. They do not oh, hurt the fish. Bounce. So if you watch, you can see. See how sturgeon feed. They're, they're just a, a vacuum machine. They go around the bottom and they suck up part of the bottom of the rip or lake and they sort out the good food in it. But they also catch fish. They eat fish. They're, they're a very successful organism. But they were really damaged by preventing them from getting to their spawning ground. That's why dams are so devastating to the, to the lake sturgeon because Sturgeon and walleyes are fish that will not jump over anything. If there's not clear water for them to swim through, they're not going up the river. So any kind of dam or any obstruction in the river will block them. And now I think they, they're going to uh, sample. fishing now for small no, bass is catching the leaves. Actually today uh, is the start of a big tournament. If you uh, drove into our building today, you'd see a lot of the tournament fishermen with their trailers and, and uh, big bass boats. And they come from all over. They come from Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Oklahoma. <laughs> and they say, no, we're not doing that again. <laughs> Get out of the, way. the fact that we've uh, got a fair number tagged now allows us now to get a pretty good measure of the uh, sturgeon population. Uh, we think it's. Uh,